Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Hang up a bright light there. I must say I'm relieved to stand up here because I had a nightmare last night that I found myself on a stage and I've forgotten to put my trousers on. So, <laughs> so this is a big achievement. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's, it's a tough act to follow. Um, Colleen does some of the most impressive site-based work in Africa. And as the Lion Recovery Fund, we're incredibly privileged to have her as part of the team. So I'm going to speak to you now. So Colleen has gone into some depth about the problems facing lions and other wildlife in Nyasa. I'm going to speak to you about how those, those problems are, are affecting the species at scale in, in Africa, about the Lion Recovery Fund, and also about what, what you as the general public could potentially do to, to help. I have to try and remember all the, all the order of my slides, which is never particularly easy. So, as Colleen alluded to, um, lions are in a state of conservation crisis. We've, we've lost an incredible 50% of Africa's lions during the last 25 years. And if you stop and just let that, that sink in, it's, it, it means that from the release of the original Lion King movie to the release of the second Lion King movie, we lost half of, of the world's lions, which is just an outrageous statistic. And, and I think what was, Colleen alluded to this as well, what was kind of crazy about this is that this somehow caught the world unawares, even many of us in the conservation space, even many of us professional conservationists, didn't realize how serious the situation facing lions was. And it's only in recent years that it's become apparent just how hectic the situation facing lions is. So Colleen alluded to some of these statistics. So lions are now um, limited to perhaps 6 or 7% of their original range. And there are just six populations of 1,000 individuals or more. Perhaps even more scary is that 43% of the, of the individual populations are of 50 individuals or fewer, which makes them incredibly vulnerable to stochastic events and to gradual decline. So it's, it is a, a dire situation facing lions. We can't avoid that, so we have to jump around and, and, and do something about it. So what are the factors that are driving these declines? Colleen alluded to some of these in, in Nyasa. And Nyasa, in many ways, is a microcosm of, of many of the problems facing wildlife and, and lions across Africa. But to try and understand the threats facing lions, it's easiest if you, if you characterize the, the threats as being one of three broad categories. So, so firstly, you have the threats that affect, that, that result in the mortality of lions themselves, of which there are a number. So, uh, for example, retaliatory killing of lions by livestock herders, which is a very serious problem. The incidental capture of, of lions in snares and traps set by bushmeat hunters. We're seeing an increasing problem associated with targets and poaching of lions for their, their body parts, their claws and teeth and fat and skins. It's quite bizarre. It's not very well understood, um, but it's a serious problem in places. Um, in parts of Africa, there are, there's a real problem with ritual killing, where young men uh, kill lions as, as a rite of passage into manhood. And in parts of Africa, trophy hunting quotas are, are too high, and that can, can drive declines in lion populations. The second major category of threats facing lions are threats that cause reduction in prey populations. And the principal threat in, in this regard is the bushmeat trade, which I think you've heard on doubtless more than one occasion today. Um, it's, it's a threat that hasn't over the years received as much bandwidth as, as it deserves. Um, we did a, a questionnaire survey of 192 protected area managers in Africa. Um, and we asked them what is the most serious threat facing both lions specifically and wildlife in general. And overwhelmingly, the poaching of animals for meat was the most significant threat uh, um, on, on average. And so it's a threat that doesn't get the credit it deserves or the discredit it deserves. Um, another, another, other factors cause declines in prey populations, such as, for example, um, growing populations of livestock and competition for grazing. And lions, uh, Lions' ecology is such that as prey populations decline, lion populations almost invariably decline as, as well. So declining prey populations is a real issue. And then the third category of problems, of course, is loss of habitat. And the primary driver for this is just expanding human populations and livestock populations, so growing uh, human habitation and, and fields, but also development, logging, 
infrastructure, charcoal burning, etc., etc., is causing a shrinkage in natural habitat. And of course, this particular threat is perhaps the least uh, reversible of all of the issues, so it's a, a real concern. So that's all pretty depressing stuff right there, so hopefully you're still, still with me and haven't started uh, planning to jump off a cliff. <laughs> but th there are reasons for, for optimism. There are real reasons for optimism. Firstly, because African countries have set aside really massive areas as protected areas and reserves. And in fact, some of the southern and eastern African countries in particular have set well above the international average proportion of their land area as parks and reserves, and are also home to some of the biggest protected areas on, on the planet, including, for example, the beautiful Nyasa Reserve, which incidentally, you have to go to. It's the, I get to travel around Africa a lot, and it's the most beautiful place I've ever been to, so go. Um, so that's a, that's a reason for optimism. We actually have uh, more than enough land um, to conserve enough lions to secure them. If we manage just the protected areas, the parks and reserves, optimally, we could support approximately three to four times the number of wild lions that currently survive. So that's really significant. Secondly, um, there's actually pretty strong political will in Africa for conservation. Um, this cannot be taken for granted, because if you're working against governments, you have very little chance of succeeding in the conservation space. But African governments generally know that their wildlife is a real asset and are quite determined to protect it. They often don't have the resources. In some cases, the, the technical know-how is, is a little bit short, but the will is, generally speaking, there, and we're really thankful for that. A key, a key reason for optimism as well is the fact that lions are such a resilient species. And in this sense, as lion conservationists, we have the advantage over the guys involved in conserving elephants or, or rhinos, because if you protect lions, you protect their prey, and you protect the habitats, they can increase really, really quickly. And so recovering the number of lions is, is a real possibility. We also have the techniques that we know are very effective when it comes to conserving lions. There's a whole heap of, of, of practice and experience has been achieved in this regard across Africa. What we need to do is just raise sufficient funding to apply these methods at sufficient scale. And this is where the Lion Recovery Fund comes in. So there are many exemplary projects at individual sites, and I can't think of a, a better one than, than Colleen's. But what we need to do is to try and apply these techniques at a much bigger scale if we're going to succeed. So this is where the Lion Recovery Fund comes in. It was formed in 2017. Uh, big difference, as a, a partnership between WCN and the Leonardo DiCaprio Foundation. And who better to introduce it than Leonardo himself? The world's lion population is in trouble. Over the last 25 years, we've lost half of the wild lions that ranged across the African continent. The vast landscapes where they once roamed are rapidly disappearing as we take over their habitat. With less space, conflicts between lions and local communities are on the rise. And when there is conflict, the lion always loses. Even in Africa's parks where lions should be thriving, lions struggle to find enough food as parks are emptied of wildlife for the commercial trade of bushmeat killing both predator and prey alike. While the challenges for lions seem daunting, the solution is within our grasp. If we start to invest in protecting and connecting existing parks and reserves, we can transform these landscapes into places where lions and other wildlife can recover and people can thrive. This is the strategy of the Lion Recovery Fund, created by the Wildlife Conservation Network and supported by LDF. We have one goal, to double the number of lions by 2050. The Lion Recovery Fund sends every dollar donated to the best solutions to protect lions and their habitat, whether those efforts come from small or large organizations. From anti-poaching and law enforcement units in the park, to innovative ways to help local communities live with lions. The Lion Recovery Fund is catalyzing the recovery of lions and wildlands across Africa. Make no mistake, this bold goal cannot be accomplished by just one organization or even one funder. 
The goal of the Lion Recovery Fund is to bring people together so that we can bring back this iconic African species. Please join us and help recover the King of the Beasts. So as Leonardo says, the aspirational vision of the fund is to try and double the number of lions, or as we prefer to think about it, recover the 50% or so of lions that have been lost over the last 25 years. And because lions are so resilient, uh, because we have the techniques that we know work, and because we have the space, it's not actually as unrealistic a goal as, as it may seem, but there's a lot to be done, first to halt the decline. So just to tell you about some of the key tenets of, of, of the fund, I'm not going to go into detail about our strategy. If you're interested, you can, you can read it. It's available online. But there are some key elements that it is worth understanding. Firstly, we, we run using the 100% model, which means that if, if we are a dollar is donated to the fund, then we re-grant a dollar to the field without taking a single cent of overhead off. That's a very critical element. Um, the, the fund is science-based. We developed a, a scientific strategy with a view to the, the literature and the latest research, but also in consultation with the wider conservation community in Africa. It's, it's rigorous and yet nimble, so we have a very efficient and effective process of identifying the best ideas for lion and lion landscape conservation, um, and, then, and, then, and then rigorously checking these for, the, for veracity and, and for accountability and so forth. But once we decide to fund a project, we're very quick in terms of getting the funding out there. And we also um, have very minimal paperwork requirements because we prefer that our grantees spend their time conserving lions than filling in reports. So that's really important to us. The LRF is, by nature, very collaborative. And so this manifests in a, in a number of ways. Firstly, through granting. We really try to encourage um, conservation practitioners in the field to work together because we see this as one of the major shortcomings in, that has under, undermined the efficacy of conservation in the past. Uh, but we also invest in, in, in convening on some small level to bring people together to try and achieve the value addition that Colleen referred to in, the, in conservation through idea sharing and, and other things. Um, we're very strategic and thoughtful and intentional about growing the conservation footprint in Africa. We did a major, as part of the planning exercise for the Lion Recovery Fund, we did a major um, exercise to map the, the conservation efforts around Africa, and it was very clear that there was a great deal of skew, both in terms of ge geography and in terms of thematic skew, meaning that a, a number of themes and a number of areas are really neglected. And we see it as being very important to get a conservation presence in those spaces, otherwise those areas will be lost. So we're very intentional about trying to catalyze projects in those areas. Um, we, yeah, we aim to protect savanna ecosystems, so we, view, we use lions as, as flagship species. They're a charismatic animal with a, a great deal of appeal and, and charisma, so we use them to raise funding to invest in projects that protect savanna landscapes. Thankfully, lions are also umbrella species. They're essentially a near-perfect proxy for savanna ecosystem health. To, to be able to support a, a healthy population of lions, you need intact habitat, you need intact prey. And so if you can get a, a piece of savanna to the, to the level where it could support healthy lion populations, they could also support most other wildlife species. So we're very intentional about this as well. We love lions, but we don't, we're not just interested in lions. We want to benefit lion landscapes, savannas. We want, to, we want to make sure those savannas sequester and store carbon, and we want to make sure these savannas work for people. Um, so we've developed this science-based strategy. I don't have time to go through, through all of it, um, but we invest in a, a number of different activities. So we do some, invest in some campaigns to build political, philanthropic, and um, public will for conservation. We support some convening, as I said, to bring people together. But by far the most significant element of what we support is supporting field conservation projects. So we support NGOs that work hand in hand with either governments and or communities. So within the field conservation space, there are a number of different types of projects that we support. Perhaps chief among them is support for protected areas. As I said earlier, Africa has a massive parks estate. 
um, but they're extremely underfunded, and many areas are, are, run, are managed to a suboptimal level, so wildlife populations have become depleted. We know that if we could help to improve management in those areas, wildlife populations and lion populations will increase. We supported a lot of projects like this. <clears throat> For example, we're, we're proud to say that within the first two years, we've managed to get support to three of the four remaining populations of critically endangered West African lions. We'd get, it, we'd get support to the fourth population as well, but there's currently no conservation partner, so we're, we're in co communication with a number of NGOs to see if we can change that. We're supporting um, Frankfurt Zoological Society in partnership with Tanapa, the Tanzanian National Parks Authority, and Serengeti, which of course is one of the world's most iconic protected areas. But even though it's an extremely um, well-funded protected area by African standards, um, it's an extremely iconic park. It's also under massive pressure. Excuse the slide, but it demonstrates just how serious the bushmeat trade is, even in a park like, like Serengeti. Um, an estimated 100,000 wildebeest a year are removed from the Serengeti system for, for bushmeat through snaring. And so this is a, one of the key threats that Frankfurt are, are tackling in partnership with the authorities. So we issued them with a, a grant to support teams designed to remove snares and also to tackle illegal livestock grazing. Um, and, and during uh, the 15 months or so since we first granted them, they've removed, I think it's about 26,000 snares. And each individual one would be capable of killing a large mammal, such as a lion. If you look at the stack of snares, you'll see the different colors of plastic. And that is because the snaring is so serious that the poachers have to be able to tell which snares are theirs. So it's a really serious problem. Um, Frankfurt and Tanapa have managed to remove, during that short 15 months, about 270 animals alive from snares, such as this wildebeest. Again, excuse the grim photograph, but it's illustrative. Um, this lion, for example, was caught in a snare, and you can see how horrendous that wound is. It's incredibly in inhumane, but also will result in death if untreated. Thankfully, that lion was darted, and you can see the snare being removed. Um, FZS and Tanapa have removed about I think it's 10 lions alive from snares during the last 15 months or so. So they're doing really important work. And to re-emphasize the point that the LRF is not just about conserving lions, um, this photograph was sent to me uh, about two days ago from one of our grantees in, in Zambia. This is Musikesi Conservation in partnership with the Zambia Carnival Program. Um, removed this snare from this leopard. So this leopard was, had the snare removed, it was treated, and then let go. So it's in with a chance of survival, thank goodness. So the first major category of field conservation projects is um, protected area management. I have to be a little bit quick now. Um, the second major category is supporting coexistence between people and, and wildlife in the areas that occur around and in between protected areas. And again, there's a number of subcategories of kinds of projects that we support. So the first is, is in instances where communities are, are interested in setting aside proportions of their land as, as conservancies and wildlife areas. We help them to set these areas up and to help, man, help them manage and govern these areas. Um, we help to tackle human-lion conflict and reduce the costs that people bear associated with living with wildlife. Um, this is a project from uh, one of our grantees, Africa People and Wildlife in northern Tanzania, who use camifera trees around livestock corrals to prevent lions from getting into attack stock or stock from breaking out. And we also support projects uh, similar to the one that, that Colleen mentioned around performance payments, which, which essentially incentivize communities to protect wildlife, recognizing their role as key custodians of a wildlife. So a whole range of different types of approaches we use to get people to live with wildlife. We support projects that tackle the illegal wildlife trade. So again, that's principally the commercial trade in bushmeat and also the trade in, in lion body parts. So this, this might be through anti-trafficking. It might be through support to the police or judiciary. Um, again, campaigns work can come in handy here. These are some slides from a, a campaign in Zambia and Malawi that's designed to reduce demand for illegal bushmeat. Uh, we supported some lion reintroductions. For example, these, this is the photographs from the reintroduction of lions into Lewondi and Majeti National Parks in, in Malawi by African Parks. Um, and we're also supporting a process to try and find a date for, for this lonely guy. So, um, so Gabon is not considered to be a lion range state. They are believed to have gone extinct there many years ago. But in 2014, this lion was caught on a trail camera 
and he's been subsequently photographed several times, and he's been heard roaring. He's still alive, but he's never actually been seen in the flesh. So we supported the NGO Panthera to work with the Gabonese authorities to, to secure the park, um, improve the anti-poaching, and then they're going to reintroduce a number of lions next year, including a whole pride of females. So you can imagine, lions don't typically smile, but this guy's going to smile. <laughs> We're going to get them to play some Barry White over the, <laughs> over the speakers. So the, the Lion Recovery Fund is very new. We, we started in, in 2017, August 2017, we were launched. At the end of 2017, this is what our grants map looked like. By the end of 2018, it looked like this. And then by the end of 2019, it'll look like this. So, so far, we've supported 68 projects by 36 different conservation organizations in 19 different countries to the tune of $6.6 .6 million to date in invested. So, while we've, we, the LRF has, has managed to hit the ground running, and, and I would like to think that the fund has had a big impact in a short space of time, there remains an incredible amount to be done. As I said, African lions are under pressure like they've never been before. Indeed, African wildlife is. Um, the the lions occur across a range of about a million square miles in Africa, which is just a gigantic area. And to, to roll out effective conservation across that scale requires an enormous amount of resources and effort. I also think it's important to note that our generation and the generation after us and the generation after that are going to be responsible for stewarding Africa's wildlife through the impending human demographic storm. The African human population is increasing faster than anywhere else on the continent, and that combined with persistent poverty and bad governance is, creates a perfect storm for conservation, and things are going to get harder before they get easier. It's important to be realistic about, about that. But I really believe that in the long run, things will get easier. Um, birth rates are dropping in almost every African country, some of them really quite quickly. Um, as, as poverty rates decline, as governance rates improve, as Africa urbanizes, it's the fastest urbanizing continent on, on Earth, prospects for lion conservation and wildlife conservation will get much better. But we just need to get lions and other wildlife through this really, really difficult period. So the Lion Recovery Fund needs to raise a lot, a lot more resources if we're going to achieve our goals. Um, this year, we were very proud to have been chosen by Disney as their partner for their philanthropic efforts around the Lion King movie and the Protect the Pride campaign. So we're extremely grateful to Disney for this. It provided a massive amount of momentum. It, it resulted in, in the shepherding and, and corralling of, of much of the zoo community through AZA. Um, and also a lot of additional donations through the general public. So thanks very much to Disney for that. We really appreciate it. We're also working on this, this really innovative um, initiative called the Lionscape Coalition, which is a partnership between the Lion Recovery Fund and the tourism industry. There's a great deal of natural synergy between the tourism sector and, and lion conservation. So tourism needs lions because lions are arguably the biggest single draw card for, for wildlife visitors to Africa. Um, and, and lion conservation needs tourism because it creates jobs and it creates economic incentives for conservation in Africa. Um, so the way it works is companies join us as partners, they give us an annual donation, and we, we invest half of that donation in the areas where the tourism companies operate, and half of the donation outside of the areas where tourism uh, industry operates. And so this achieves two things. Firstly, it harnesses the power of the, of the tourism industry and coordinates it around a single big-scale conservation effort. But it also overcomes the fact that tourism is restricted to a, a relatively small proportion of the tourism estate. So it means that tourists could visit Africa in somewhere safe, like Botswana or Kenya, and, and their dollars can benefit lion conservation in a place like Central African Republic or South Sudan, which are, which are not safe. So we've got a number of, of key cons uh, tourism companies that have, have joined this partnership. It's worth mentioning them. Wilderness Safari, Singita, and beyond, Ultimate Safaris, Asalia, Dazzle Africa, and we were very proud to announce that Great Plains, another very well-respected company, have literally just before this talk signed up. So thank you very much, Derek and Bevy, for that. So 
So we're excited about this as a potential mechanism to help provide sustainable funding at, at scale. So moving towards the end, I've already overrun. I'm probably going to, I'm being sent daggers by my colleagues there. So how can you help us help lions in closing? Firstly, you can help us spread the word about the lion conservation crisis. You can share our, so you can follow us on social media and follow our messaging. You can follow the other very impressive lion conservation entities out there and, and share the messaging that they put out. You could visit Africa. Tourism really does create strong economic incentives for conservation in Africa. You have to do it responsibly, so do it through our Lionscape Coalition partners because they all do practice very responsible tourism. So please do that. If you're worried about your carbon footprint, donate to the Lion Recovery Fund because we'll, conserve, we'll help conserve forests and woodlands. <laughs> and we would really appreciate it if you would consider digging deep and supporting the Lion Recovery Fund and asking your friends and family to do so. Or if you don't feel like supporting the Lion Recovery Fund, supporting projects like Colleen or Shivani's or any of the other really impressive lion conservation efforts that are out there. But we really need to scale the funding in a very significant way if we're going to achieve conservation at scale. So in closing, we'd like to thank every single one of you that have donated to the, the Lion Recovery Fund in the past. Um, I, I realize that a big conservation initiative like this, it may seem that, that, that a small amount of funding is not going to help because the, 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 the problem is too big, but it really does help. So the momentum that WCN's donors provided us in the beginning and continue to provide us helped us to attract other significant donors, and it really has had a big impact. We get every dollar to the field, and on average for every dollar raised, we've managed to leverage and unlock um, 50 cents of other funding, so we could, we could, it's a little bit of a stretch, but we could almost claim that if you give us a dollar, we'll turn it into a dollar 50 for conservation. So thank you very much to all of the donors. Thank you to Disney. Thank you to our Landscape Coalition partners, to the DiCaprio Foundation, to Tiffany's, and every other individual corporate foundation that supported us. Thank you.